Well, hello. Welcome to the next episode of the Faceplant Chronicles. Today, we're going to make something that is probably a growl bassy thing, kind of like this. And we're going to be doing it from scratch. And I think that this is going to be unedited because I do enjoy these Bob Ross kinds of videos to where I can just sit here and babble and we can geek out on sound design and all that stuff. So before I mention anything, yo, if you like my sounds, alchemy.com, if you want to learn how to do this in depth, then obviously outside of watching this video, you can uh, hit me up for lessons or ask questions in the discord, lots of resources on this channel. I would love it if you could like the video, share this with somebody and um, help me grow my channel. With that being said, let's go ahead and open up with the first tools. We're going to grab a transient shaper and turn on clipping. I tend to favor this over limiting now just because... Uh, the limiter colors the sound pretty hard. So with growl basses, it's relatively simple. You can go as complex as just using, or sorry, as simple as using a wavetable. You can go as complex as doing lots of FM and stuff. And I don't have necessarily like a point of direction outside of what I just made, but we will begin with, um, yeah, having some fun. So do I want to make a wavetable? Sure, why not? Let's do that. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just grab anything kind of like so. And I'm going to focus on pulling one other harmonic out of this. Um, on my master classes, I've got a lot of info on how to actually build wavetables and stuff. But long story short, if you're trying to keep the sub in, you just want to make sure that the first harmonic is the highest, as you can see here. And then something to be aware of is that you can rotate the phase of this in different ways that kind of looks cool when you do that. But let's go ahead and go to this side now. And we're going to drag this up and just kind of create something that might be a little bit more in that world. And that will be a little bit more squarey. And what's cool is if we click on both of these now, you'll see that we've essentially created a very simple wavetable. Now, there's a lot more that we can do with this. If you go here, this is our filtering. And so what we can do is come to this side. We can grab the cutoff here and make it kind of simple. We can create a keyframe right here and move this up and then move this uh, a little bit down and then move it back up sure let's do it again and now this time we can do a little bit of notching which if you look right here you can see that this is relatively this area right here but behind the first through the 40th harmonic anyways is going to be where most of like the low mid magic is going to happen so all we need to do now is kind of work in reverse to where you'll see that this will be keyframe to where we can sweep that with a notch um, so with that, if we take a listen to this, this is what this wavetable sounds like. Which honestly should be more than enough for what we need. Cool. So the next piece of this would be to FM it with something else, which we can use a simple wavetable. We can grab another, but for this particular case, for the sake of efficiency, I'm just going to grab one that I've made from before. I don't know what this sounds like off the top of my head, even though I made it, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this until it begins to sound like it's too much. So So as you can hear already, that sounds really good. Maybe we can set this at a second harmonic. Let's see what that sounds like. I actually like it better at the single harmonic. And now what we want to do is we want to create basically an LFO or a macro or something like that to make this really easy for us. So I think what I'm going to do though is show you this trick that I've been doing for a really long time and explain why, but as opposed to mapping this just to an LFO, I'm actually gonna map everything to a single macro. So I would like this to do this and maybe have this move downward just for fun. So something kind of like that. And then what we can also do is map this here to where it's only going to move. And for whatever reason, if we don't like it, we can always, you know, change the values of this. So we can set it to not be as in-depth or something of the sort.
That sounds pretty good. And so now what we'll do is send this through some distortion and then some other stuff. So let's go ahead and put some saturation on this. Now we will send this through a bandpass filter and we're going to kind of focus just on these low mids right here. So uh, as you can see, there's a trend going on with this about what we're mapping this to. So as you can see here, maybe give this a little bit more, a little bit higher perhaps. Let's distort it again. And this time we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna add some remod to this and give this some low pass noise. Just a bit. And then we'll add a fatrator here to pull some of that up. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna use this here to manipulate this because this is also kind of like a bandpass. So if you listen, maybe a little bit higher. and then pull back on the mix. And basically this is just a way to kind of bring back some of the high end. And if you've gotten this far, then really everything after this is just coloring. But let's go ahead and do some more to where we're going to utilize our favorite neuro trick here. To where we're gonna create some vowels, kind of like so. And um, if we really wanted to, which I say that, Maybe instead of saying if we want to, let's just go ahead and do it. Maybe. Uh, yes. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is I am going to map macro 1 to control macro 2. And then I'm going to make macro 2 control these guys. So this would be filter stuff. And this is advantageous because what we can do is move all of these and map them individually without running out of spaces here. So that's kind of nice. And if we take a look at this now, whenever this moves, we're getting some cool movement, kind of like so. But whenever we move this together, you can see that that's creating some initial kind of timbral movement that's manipulating all of these guys with the same macro. Let's go ahead and add some table distortion now. Shaper table. I always like I always mislabel this. And something else that we can do is also play with the offset a bit. So maybe we can move this downward just a tad. Let's see what that does. A bit much. Maybe we can move it upward. Let's see what that does. But you can see here, like, there's not really a right or wrong. It's just a matter of preference and playing around with that. But we can also adjust this here if we need to for saying, all right, well, it's going too high and I want this to move at a certain place, but this is kind of the fun and puzzle piece of it is probably what I would call it. But if we can kind of find something here to just make this more, how do you say, uh, just, just make it more vocal, I guess. Cool. Let's go ahead and add a notch filter now. And this is just going to sweep the low mids. So we can go back to this and let that carry on. Maybe somewhere around here. And as you can tell, we're really trying to focus on those low mids. So. Let's make this go all the way as well. Or maybe we'll make both of this go up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, to me that sounds the best so far. We can also do another wavetable if we wanted to, to where we can control how much this goes into this one. And we can separate this to have different movement and whatnot or different pieces. And I think that's important to consider, but for now we're gonna keep it all the same, but just know like, hey, maybe you want to have an FM shape that's a different one of these um, options, right? Options are important, but for the sake of keeping it consistent, I'm just going to do this and let's see what that does. <laughs> But what I might also do is turn this down by quite a bit so that way it's not so rough. Cool. All right. Now we can get into some multipass stuff. And if you recall, you're going to realize that this is starting to look very similar to what we would do with like a neurobase or something. But the big difference is that the aggressiveness of the mids has a different feel to it. And of course, this is more like dubstepy or whatever. But yeah, it's still fun to do either way. So one cool trick that I can show you is that if we want to continue to keep the mapping, as you can see here, then we can grab this and we can actually set the delay time here and so now if we map the outside of this to macro one then we're going to maintain a chain of events and that means that whatever we do to this will also be mapped to this so we can map multiple things to it which is kind of cool so we can do like a comb filter perhaps maybe turn this down and set the degree of this to be a little bit up so let's see what that does <laughs> That's starting to sound a little bit more like what we're going for. Yeah. Sick. So on the top end of this, we can do quite a bit to add some high end crunch if we wanted to. Um, I mean, there's a lot of options that we have, but maybe something that we can mess with is just another fatturator, which is generally what I do anyways, but we can turn this down a bit and just focus on the fuzz. And if it's not enough, we can actually distort the fuzz. which can sometimes be nice. So, sorry, I soloed that. So something that we can do right now to make this immediately sound a little better is send this into a separate sub. I'm not really worried about what's going on here because it's under a band pass anyways, but we can kind of turn this down a bit and send this into lane three. And now we just have a clean sub that will blend into that. So, um, and doing things this way is kind of cool too, because sometimes it can open up some options. So if we were to add like a detune, then we basically now are just making a narrow base, but we can also go crazy with this and maybe introduce some spread. So, which that actually sounds pretty good. Uh, even though it's super stereo, it sounds really cool. Let's go back off of that. Yeah, I kind of like that. I'm pretty fond of it. We can create more drama with this drama by opening this up and having a little bit of a low pass here. So now that actually starts to sound a little bit more like a like it's talking, I guess. If it's always open and the top end is always present, it might not always sound that great. But sometimes adding this to the top 
or off the top can be pleasant. <laughs> So we can also adjust certain pieces of this because depending on how you place the EQs and the filters and all that other good stuff, and like this doesn't really have a limit by the way, um, you can continue doing this to your heart's content. So something that could be fun, sorry, uh, thoughts of all the things that you can do. And that's why I make so many videos of these bases and stuff. And I'm hoping that like somebody gets it the first time, but you'll realize that even though I do a very similar process every time, it's always, it always sounds different. Um, I had a point with that, but yeah, we can kind of make this do like a specific talking pattern now. So because these are all curved and not cuts, if I do this, then that means that we can kind of phrase that. So now that might help pull out, out pull out some of that a little bit more so sounds pretty good we can add some more shaper table to this and again like what I'm doing right now, in case if this is the first episode that you've ever seen, is I am just feeling this out. I don't have an, a, an agenda or necessarily any intention. I'm just kind of being like, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? And that's kind of the way that I like to do sound design because it's more important to build relationships and understand like how this stuff interacts with each other as opposed to like, hey, this is the formula. Because uh, I don't know, at the end of the day, you know, you want to be your own you want to design your own stuff, right? Or you want to have your own signature sound. And I've realized that if you just spend all of your time trying to copy that Skrillex bass or that AU5 bass or whatever, um, it, it, it can sometimes lead you down a road that you might not be happy with, long story short. So let's see what that does. Oh, 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 oh. whoa. Shaper Table was one of the greatest additions to the Kilohertz ecosystem, I believe, um, just because it sounds really good. But now that we have that, we can grab another notch because I'm feeling it like Shulk. And I want to see what this does. So as you can tell now, um, we're getting kind of that cutting motion here. And based off of what you cut, especially through all of the processing that we have on this, is going to have a really, a relatively large impact on the sound. So for example, maybe I just want to focus on cutting this here, very small. And also keep in mind that the wavetables that we have are going to significantly affect this as well. Uh, just for example, let me save this as a demo. We'll call this um, Chronicle 8, because I, I think that this is episode 8, and we'll come back to it. But if I were to pick a different wavetable, say like from the Nocturne or something, like check this out. Now, it's not super different, but it is enough to be like, uh, you know, or even if I change the Trash Panda to something different, say Buster Dragon. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I might be eating my own words here because that does sound very similar. Um, let's see if we can get some different stuff here. Yeah, so perhaps not. Um, perhaps that's just from... Well, there you go. That's pretty cool, at least. Um, what happens if we just set this here? Hmm. Well, I'd say experiment, because right now this actually sounds incredibly similar regardless of what I send through it. Um, but, you know, use your best judgment, and I think that it'll matter at the beginning. And then maybe perhaps based off of what you hear at first is going to shape how you shape this. So I guess the good news, though, is like, I don't want to see anybody in the comment section being like, yo, can I have your wavetable? It's like, no, did you hear what I just did? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Um, but perhaps at the beginning, if you listen to this, it'll sound significantly different. So if we turn all this off. Right, versus maybe something like this. Let's see what that sounds like. Maybe if we change this out into something different. I have so many wavetables, you all. There we go. So that's starting to sound different. Now what happens if we switch that up? It's similar characteristic, but timbre is slightly different, which is fine. So uh, there's other things that we can do depending on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. But the reason why I saved this and did it this way is because now what we can do is apply this to here. And what's cool about this, oh no, no, stop, stop it, I'm busy. What's cool about this is that if I decide that I wanna use something different, I can close that out and then be like, oh, I wanna use a random instead. And that's a benefit, a large benefit to doing things this way. If you don't want to do that and you're keen on just keeping it here, there's also other ways to do this. Um, for example, you can set the rotation of this to zero and then randomize or modulate the phase. Phase plant is amazing because of the flexibility of the routing options, so don't feel like you need to conform into one specific thing. However, yeah, I, I don't know. We're just doing it this way for the sake of doing it this way. Um, so with that, we've got this movement now. <laughs> I'm going to go back to that original wavetable that I made, which was Chronicle 8, I believe. And then I think Trash Panda. Shout out to Corey. So we'll go back to that original movement. Just playing around now with different ways to spin this. And as you can see, like making subtle changes and trying to, you know, uh, adjust this and tweak it is really where you're going to find the magic. And the other thing is like, if you're pulling this out of rolling sampler and you have a good phrase that you like, then you've got all these different variations. I typically like to use this. Uh, the reason why is because the formant, sorry, the filter shapes of this or the wave shapes of all of these are very natural and common base shapes. And so just keeping it on morph. Yeah, in fact, I like this so much that what I did was I exported this wavetable and threw it in Drambo. And then I also threw it into Bitwig because the, like the, the shapes on this are, you know, very usable, I guess, as a utility purpose. So... With that, I mean, what else could we do? We, well, a lot, I suppose, but we could pull this down. We could add stuff to the top end. Um, we can also like do some kind of ducking reverb if we wanted to. So you all have likely seen me do this before, but we can grab something like this and grab an audio follower. That's what they call it. And be like, duck. And so now what this is going to do is anytime it hears the signal, it's going to duck out the reverb and then slowly come back in. So yeah, so something else that we can do to kind of make this motion go a little bit further is we can actually set a pitch bin on this and this will kind of make it start to sound more like it's you know, um, like a bass fill phrase or something that you would hear in your bro step. So with that, we can kind of do large pitch bends. We can change the shape of that as well. So. And we can set this to whatever we want. So maybe we just want to do an octave. So. Mm -hmm. 
I usually just do like a few semitones though, to be honest. Like that sounds pretty cool. And then we can also adjust this a bit as well. And that's the cool thing is that once you have a bunch of things set up, you kind of just want to adjust it accordingly. Now, the one thing that I will say with this that will be super helpful, um, you, I guess you can do it here with multi-pass. I have this thing that I use called Final Neurochain. And what this is, it's three bands, but it's essentially just a OTT, but it still doesn't quite sound the same. So I will say even with this, this is what this sounds like. I, sure. I do still like to use something on the outside, say like a fuse compressor or so, because this will give us a lot of pull from that high end and crispiness. So if we turn all this stuff up a little bit, check this out. Now you can hear that it's a lot more clear, right? Now, once you have something like that though, then what I would suggest is come into this stuff and start changing the vowels, you know? Change it kind of like so, move this up a little bit, see what that does. I actually don't like that nearly as much. But that's kind of part of the fun, and you'll notice that if you can't get something the way that you want it to, it's because it's all in the details, guys. It's all in the details. To be honest with you, I don't like any of that, so I'm just going to go back to the original. There we go. And uh, from this, we can also experiment with different placements of, say, like the notch filter. So maybe we don't want to go that deep. So maybe something like that. That sounds really nice. It's a little sharp on the mids, but it's okay. Um, we can back off of the mix of this. We can adjust how much of this we use. We can also change the positioning of this a bit. So I messed up there somewhere. There we go. Now the other thing that you can consider is, I'm gonna turn that off for a second, is doing it here, which will also give you a different timbre. So if I were to map this kind of like so, um, now we can turn that back on. This is gonna sound drastically different. See, so that's a much more aggressive sound, but playing with the order of effects and how you do this stuff. And then also like looking at it at a glance and being like, uh, is it too much? So what happens if I back off of these and just leave it as this? See how that kind of changed a lot? Or what happens if I pull off this shaper table? You know? There's other things that you can do as well. So um, perhaps you want to focus more on bringing out even more. You know, we can kind of go crazy with different movement, kind of like so. And we can moderate that and move that around. Let's see what that does. At this point, I can't really tell the difference to be totally transparent with you, but it's enough to kind of say, all right, well, this is cool. And um, there's a lot of other things that we can kind of get into. And I would definitely say, like, let yourself play and kind of just have a good time doing it. Uh, maybe some delay, turn down the feedback. But if we take a look at the other one that I did, you can see that I've also got a fuse compressor on here, and this is not that much different. So we've got a bandpass, distortion, slice EQ, shaper table, comb filter, filter, 
phaser, chorus, delay, shaper table, slice EQ. Um, but you can see that I'm using a little bit more of basic shapes. I'd also argue that this one is a little less bright, whereas this one that we have here is a lot more so, um, has a lot more high end. Um, you can also play around with the slope, so. So, yeah, I'm hoping that this kind of gives you a jump off point about how to start making basses like this, but it's really just a combination of FM and then the filtering, filter distort filter, which it, basically, guys, it's a neuro bass. It's just that we're trying to tackle the FM timbres. Um, yeah, I'm always a proponent of if you can neuro bass, you can pretty much make anything else. What else could we do to this? Uh, perhaps we could try to introduce a harmonic. So, I don't know, just for fun, we could grab this at a seventh or something and then introduce just a tad. We don't need the whole thing, but maybe 20% or so and see if that does anything. I guess you could. I can't really tell the difference though because the sound is already super complex. But um, I think that going back into the adjustments here, kind of like so, and changing these things around will kind of help allude to getting different results as well. So where is this going? I believe that that's going to, okay, so yeah, so it's aligned correctly, but we can maybe change this to like Buster Dragon and maybe we can change this to something that is a little bit more simple and adjust the amount here. <laughs> We can also change the polarity of this to make it go down instead. So we can start it to where it's open and move this up. So Something else that we can try is, as you can see, this is only on a positive polarity. So we can actually use this here to try to make it go both ways. Um, so we can kind of adjust that. We can also set a polarity on this as well. So if we set that to the middle, um, this is now going to do vastly different things, as you can see. So, yeah, so that's a very different phrase now. But either way, you can kind of see just by having this, depending on what you throw into it, is what's going to give you those different sounds, you know. So some really cool sounds that uh, give you a lot of variation. So don't be afraid to like set a bunch of stuff up and don't worry too much about how it sounds initially. But once you have something that gets yourself in the ballpark, then start to mess around and start pulling things off and adding stuff and whatnot, whatever. So yeah, uh, I think I'm going to leave this patch for the Arcana members and just for fun. And if you have stuck around this long, I hope that you learned something and had some fun doing some sound design with me. If you got any questions or you got any tips that you like doing, obviously if we go outside of Faceplant, we can start implementing things like vocoders and all that other jazz. But 
for the sake of like, yo, how do we get something going that's going to be an interesting phrase? This is a great place to start. So in any case, thanks everybody. I hope that uh, you had a great time and I will see you in the next one.